All right, thanks for watching. And today I just want to quickly evaluate the integral from zero to pi of sine squared dt because it appeared in another video of mine about finding the area of an ellipse. And it's also super useful, especially in, in single variable calculus. And the way to evaluate this is simply notice if we replace this by cosine of 2t, it would be much easier to evaluate. But fortunately, we can write this in terms of cosine of 2t. So notice cosine of 2t is actually equal to cosine squared of t minus sine squared of t by the double angle formula. But now we want to write this in terms of sine squared. So it turns out we can easily transform this into sine squared by just doing one minus sine squared of t. Because remember, cosine squared plus sine squared equals to one. So it becomes one minus sine squared of t minus sine squared of t. And that's 1 minus 2 sine squared of t. And that's great because now we can solve for sine squared of t in terms of everything else. Then, so cosine of 2t equals to that. So 2 sine squared of t, it's 1 minus 1 minus cosine of 2t. And so, sine squared of t, it, you divide this by 2, so 1 half minus 1 half cosine of 2t. Very good. And it turns out this identity is the one that will help us evaluate that integral. Because now, if you take the integral of sine squared of t by the identity we just discovered, that's the integral of 1 half minus 1 half cosine of 2t dt. And now it's much easier to find an antiderivative of this. Life is good. Antiderivative is one half is t over two. And now be very careful here. You tempted to say that an antiderivative of cosine of two t is sine two t times two or something, but we want one half. So if you differentiate sine of two t, you get two cosine of two t. But to get one half, you actually need to divide by four. So it's minus one fourth sine of two t from zero to pi. If you're in doubt, you could just use a substitution u equals to two t. So that would also work. And now all we need to do is plug in, you know, our things. So that's pi over two minus one quarter sine of two pi minus 0 over 2 plus 1 quarter sine of 0. Sorry, this is 2 pi. All right, now sine of 2 pi. Boom, this disappears. Boom, this disappears. And boom, this disappears. So jackpot. In the end, we just have pi over 2, which is just what we needed. By the way, this exact same thing also works for cosine squared. You can just do the same thing, what you saw for cosine squared in terms of sine squared in your double angle formula. All right, so I hope you like this little calculus integral extravaganza. If you wanna see more calculus and more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.